This is the FlipNerd.com Expert Real Estate Investing Show, the show for real estate investors, whether you're a veteran or brand new. I'm your host, Mike Hambright, and each week I bring you a new expert guest that will share their knowledge and lessons with you. If you're excited about real estate investing, believe in personal responsibility, and taking control of your life and financial destiny, you're in the right place. This is episode number 326, and my guest today is Jim Ingersoll. Jim is an investor out of Richmond, Virginia, a coach, and uh, also has his own real estate investing podcast. Jim's been around for a long time and involved in a lot of things. Today, we discuss a very powerful topic, paying for your healthcare expenses through real estate investing. Now, we've had other shows that we talk about using self-directed accounts to invest, but usually those are with uh, our friends at several self-directed uh, custodians or companies. Jim is actually a practitioner and he does this as himself as a real estate investor. He's here to share how you can use self-directed health savings accounts to pay for your deductibles and other medical or health care expenses with real estate and generally tax-free. By the way, you can do very similar things to pay for your children's education as well. And given what's happened with healthcare expenses and education expenses in this country and where it's likely going, I'm sure it's impacted you and your family in a negative way. So you definitely want to listen in on today's show. I'd even recommend getting a notebook because uh, there's going to be some great notes that come out of this and some great opportunities for you to pay for some of the biggest expenses you likely have in your life through real estate investing. So please help me welcome Jim Ingersoll to the show. Jim, welcome to the show. Hey, it's awesome to be here with you, Mike. Thanks for having me back. It's yeah. nice to see you today. Yeah, it's good to see you again. A lot of people that listen to the show, you know that I've, we're having some repeat guests on <laughs> now, but Jim has been, it's probably been literally like two years since you were on the show. So I don't have was, the number down in front of me, but I know it's been probably a couple hundred shows ago. So good to see you. Way back at the beginning. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's been, we're actually coming up on uh, three years actually. So Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Well, hey, um, I, uh, I, like I just, I just told you kind of privately offline where when you contribute to our other podcast, REI Classroom. So definitely appreciate that. And for folks, if you're not listening to that, um, you should really check out REI Classroom wherever you listen to podcasts at iTunes, Stitcher, anywhere, because uh, we have people like Jim that are really dropping some great knowledge in there. And it's like five minute lessons. I mean, quick, short and sweet and good stuff. Isn't that a great way to learn when you think about it? Yeah. Five, five minutes. You can cover a lot. You can change the world in five minutes yeah. with the right information, really, with no BS, no fluff, no puff. You know what I mean? Yeah. Five minutes of content can change your life. So it's yep. a great service you're providing. Yeah. Thank you. And thanks for contributing. Well, Jim, hey, before we get started here, I'm excited to talk about it. There's, you know, a lot of, we won't try to get into too many uh, political uh, discussions here today. <laughs> but everybody, I, I'll be honest with you, this is actually, I didn't even tell you this. This mm -hmm. is real time. Like two days ago, uh, two days ago, my wife handed me an envelope. It was from our insurance company. She's like, hey, you need to deal with this. And our, our premiums went up 20%. And it's, yeah. it's been happening every year. And truthfully, we have a high deductible. Like we, we never have any problems. I, we're right. like a family of three, never have any problems. My, I don't even think my son has been to the doctor other than for like a regular checkup for a few years. <laughs> um, and so we, you know, we, we've never cost our insurance company a dime literally, but our premiums just keep going up. So I'm excited to talk about this uh, topic of how to invest in a way to where you can use those, those, uh, yep. those earnings tax free to pay for your medical expenses. But Hey, uh, before I, before I steal your thunder here, why don't you tell us a little bit about you and your background? Okay. Well, I'm Jim Ingersoll. It's good to see everybody today. And um, I am located in beautiful Richmond, Virginia. I grew up in a small town in western New York, probably an hour, hour and a half outside of Buffalo. Up in the snow belt, we got one or 200 inches of snow a year. <laughs> it was crazy. a lot. So I grew up building snowmen and snow We forts. get one or two inches in Dallas, yeah. maybe. maybe. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't miss it, that's for sure. But for all the investors up there, I know they're they're crushing it up there this year, too. So it's great. But so we moved here in 1998 to Virginia, and that's back when I had a job. Growing up, uh, my dad was an architect and a part-time landlord, and he made it look so easy. I saw him do some really amazing things financially and made it look so easy that we ended up jumping in after watching him. But, you know, uh, before real estate, I was an engineer, electrical engineer, got a master's in engineering management, and just kept climbing that corporate ladder because that's another thing I learned from my dad, Mike. He taught me to work hard, get a good job, 
and keep taking all the promotions you can get. But you know what? After a while, that made me sick. I jumped off that ladder and went full bore right into real estate. Yeah. Yeah, and the truth is, is uh, I think when, when your parents were growing up or when my parents were growing up, yeah. it was a different world. There was loyalty on both sides, and that doesn't exist anymore. People are transient. I had a woman that worked for me for a couple of years quit over a text message, uh, just said, hey, I'm, <laughs> I, I quit. Uh, I don't think that says anything about me. I, I was just shocked by it. It's like, who, who does that? Who does Millennials. that? Millennials. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Millennials but uh, anyway, I, I think it's, a diff- it's just a different world uh, now than it was in the past, and I don't think they're – there's not even a such thing as a blue chip company to invest in anymore, let, let alone work for, right? Right. No, yeah. I totally agree. Yeah. Well, I know we agree on uh, being self-sufficient. And it's actually interesting that we're talking about how to – another way to pay for your health insurance today because this never was really the way that I was when I was in corporate America because I didn't have a family yet. But a lot of people stay in their job because of health insurance, Right. Right. Because they're yeah, afraid I mean, of like leaving or yeah. I left my job maybe ten or twelve years ago. It was a long time ago. And I went into real estate full time wholesaling to start, like a lot of people. But one of the fears I had was um what am I gonna do with my medical? Even back then, and we didn't it wasn't a crisis like it is today with right. premiums jacking up and all that, but it was still a concern even back then. Yeah. The other concern was like, how am I gonna get my kids through college? Both of my kids were um young. They were in like eighth and ninth grade when I left my job. And so I had a lot of fear to overcome to pull that up. And those are two areas uh, that we can talk about both of them today because you don't want anything to hold you back. You got to jump over that. I call it the four letter dirty F word, fear, F-E-A-R. It's horrible, man. Yeah. It will cost you millions of dollars if you let it creep into your life. So you got to ditch it. Absolutely. Yeah. And I know that we both, I'll say that there's a couple of hurdles as a real estate investor that we have to get over, right? The first one is health insurance and how am I going to pay for things? How am I going to offset my income is the next one, right? And we're not going to mm-hmm. talk much about that today, but a lot of people are like, hey, I, I'm making eighty or $100,000 a year, whatever the number is for you. And they're fearful of, well, if I just leave my job cold turkey, then I'm making zero. How do I get up over that hump? And then I can tell you, I know you know this too, once you get, once you get to a point to where your business is doing well and you've overcome, you know, well overcome, the amount you need to live on, then the rest, then it starts to get a little more fun, right? There's, there, right. you don't have that fear anymore because you're like, Hey, I'm, I'm kind of playing with the house's money if I will. Right. Right. Yeah. No, you're right. And when yeah. I, when I left my job, I was, I was nervous. I had a really good job. I was running multiple factories in multiple States and I had a really good executive type job. Um, and I jumped off that ladder cause I got sick of it. It was yeah. fun opening up things and hiring people, but then they started asking me to lay people off and close stuff down. It was, it sucks. Yeah. So we started doing that and I said, goodbye, that's it. And, uh, but I had to replace my income really quick. So I did that with wholesaling and I just got this thing of producing. And so I just went right, right into high volume wholesaling. Yeah. And yep. like the next year I did 120 deals just wow. like that. That's awesome. So that's awesome. That's, that's sort of my story on how I escaped. But that insurance, paying for kids' college education, make sure your family's safe and secure is really important. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, so let's talk about uh, health savings accounts. And for folks that are listening, you've probably heard us talk about self-directed IRAs and other things before. And usually those have always been from uh, a guest that's on the show that's a custodian or works for a self-directed IRA company. So Jim is a practitioner. He's a real estate investor like most of you listening. And so we're going to get his perspective today on how you can invest inside of your health savings account with real estate and uh, essentially end up having, you know, earning pre-tax revenue that you can pay for your medical expenses with. Right, Jim? It's time for a quick announcement. We'll be back to the show in less than 30 seconds. PassiveRental.com is your source for turnkey, done-for-you rental properties. If you'd like to be an investor and not a landlord, please visit PassiveRental.com to learn how to purchase cash flowing, professionally managed rental properties in the hottest rental markets across the country. We can also help connect you with financing for your next property. Invest the easy way today and get started by visiting PassiveRental.com. Inside of your health savings account with real estate and uh, essentially end up having, you know, earning pre-tax revenue that you can pay for your medical expenses with, right, Jim? 
Absolutely. It's a, it's a phenomenal tool. It's one of the best gifts our government ever gave us. And it helps you feel warm and secure and take care of your families while you, while you transition into full time. Because yeah. like you said, those premiums are going up. Mine went up. We're just renewing right now. And it went up significantly. But even worse than that is the high deductibles. I mean, right. if you're lucky, you might have like a $4,200 deductible, but many of the plans available are 6000 plus per year. Yeah, I think ours Just is for six. The, yeah. Yeah. And then the total for your whole family out of pocket could be 10 or 12 grand. Yeah. And that, yeah. that's rightfully scares a lot of people. Yeah. Well, let's talk. Maybe we could kind of break this down by first, let's talk about what a health savings account is. And then we can kind of dive into how you use, use it and other ways you could use it to, you know, what expenses you could pay for. Well, all of your medical expenses can be paid for, but a health savings account, um, I like to do them self-directed. So if you go to yeah. a self-directed IRA custodian, equity trust, I really like the folks over to Quest IRA, IRA services, wh whichever one you've got that you, you enjoy is great. But open up um, an HSA, it's called health savings account. It's very similar to a IRA. And then from there, you can begin to contribute. And, uh, you know, your max uh, contribution every year, I don't have the number in front of me, but that doesn't really matter. Just start to make some contribution to it. And then once you've got a little bit of money in there, you can invest it into real estate. And that's where I really want to focus sure. because the, the, the myth is if you've only got a little bit of money in an HSA, it's just going to sit there and you can't really invest it. Right. But the truth is, if you're a little bit creative and you know how to, to get around some of this stuff, you can invest it. And you can use it as leverage similar to, to buying a rental property at a bank because you come in, you may have 10 or 20 percent down and you've got control of a one or two hundred thousand dollar asset. Right. You can do the exact same thing in your IRA if you're a little bit creative. Yeah. So so what can you do in uh, can you, you could you could obviously do a fix and flip, right? Yep. So where it starts to get a little where you have to get a little get a little more challenging, probably I try me if I'm wrong is an assignment or a wholesale deal, which I, I know there's probably a way to run them through there, right? Sure. Yeah. And, you can then, do an uh, and then you could even buy and hold long-term uh, properties. Okay. You could have a rental property in there where the rent checks every month are going to pay for your health, for your medical That's bills. How I right? do it. So, yeah. so you can do all that. There are some prohibited transaction rules you need to be aware of. There is also unrelated business income tax. Um, so if you borrow debt finance, if your HSA account borrows from somebody on debt financing, you yep. may need to look into what's called UBIT, which is unrelated business income tax. Yeah. You also want to avoid doing the same type of transaction over and over in your account because you don't want it to be perceived as, as a business. You want it to be perceived as an investment. Right. right. And that's why it works really good for investing in notes. It works really well for buying a rental property. You could do a subject to deal and different things. Now, you can, you can, your HSA can still borrow money. Um, but if you do it on debt financing, you're going to have to pay tax. Right. If you borrow it on equity financing, you may be able to avoid that tax. So that's how I like to do it. Okay. Okay. So, and so just to, without getting into a, a tremendous amount of detail here yeah. on uh, borrowing money, I think um, I don't want to gloss over the, the significance right. of the fact that instead of doing what I did, you know, many years back of saying, well, this is in my, I don't, I actually don't have a health savings account, which I know is one of those things that I'd need yeah, to do, yeah. but we have uh, IRA accounts. So historically I would put whatever the limits were when sure. I was younger, $3,000 a year, yeah. put it in there, invest it in an S&P 500 index fund right. or something silly. Um, and there's no way to lever that. that. That's just what I put in there is what I put in there and what it returns is what it returns. But in these accounts, you can actually bar th those accounts can actually borrow money and use leverage to buy more real estate than you can afford, essentially, right? Yeah, let me give you an example in my HSA. Okay. And uh, then we can talk about what you can do with the money after because that's important also um, because it can come out tax-free and pay for your medical. But uh, I'll give you an example. I'll give you like a basic case study. There was a, a five-bedroom house over near a hospital outside of Richmond that my HSA account bought about two years ago, say. And it was, say, a $70,000 house, and it needed $20,000 worth of work. So it's like a 90 grand investment, right? Now, that all sounds good, but my HSA doesn't have $90,000 sitting, in it, right. right? So what I did is, is my HSA borrowed that money from somebody else's equity trust account, another mm -hmm. self-directed IRA. And they joint ventured together on that, basically using equity financing. 
So anything above that $90,000, someday when it gets sold, we're going to split. And all the rental income coming in every month also gets split. So okay. my HSA, HSA number one, borrows all of the money, 90 grand from equity trust account number two. Okay, so that money comes in and then we buy the house, we do the rehab and we've rented it. It's been rented for a couple of years, I think at twelve fifty a month. Okay, now twelve fifty a month is good rent for a four and five bedroom house. Uh, but the nice thing is there's no mortgage due every month. So sure. what I do, what it, what we do is my HSA will split that net rental income. And so half of it goes back to equity trust, half of it remains in my HSA. Okay. You kind of follow okay. the math. So yeah, and it, unlike unlike uh, unlike and debt, debt equity, sure. if you you could lose money in this instance, I guess unless you had really bad repairs or a bad make ready or right. something, you shouldn't kind of month to month lose any money. But yeah. So yeah, because there's no mortgage payment right. due, so we just take the twelve forty five. We we hold out the taxes, we hold out the insurance. I pay the property manager his eight uh, percent fee. And the net, whatever that is, say it's say it's nine hundred dollars, whatever yeah. it is, four fifty goes into my HSA every month. Four fifty goes back to the equity trust account every month. Yep, yep. So and it's actually closer to five hundred in real life on this case study. Sure. So I've got five hundred dollars a month stacking up in my HSA, and that's so that's six thousand dollars a year, right? Right, right. And see, I I kind of designed it that way because my deductible is six thousand two hundred dollars a year. Okay. You see how one rental property? Yeah, just totally one. One hundred percent leverage. Didn't need any of my own money for that deal. Right. Is creating enough money to cover my deductible. Yeah, and as a rental, as a buy and hold, it will presumably yeah. continue to do that every year, every year. Whether right. if you were doing fix and flips, you'd have to, you'd have to, you know, do one of those every year, I guess. Or yeah, so no, I could yeah. come back and buy a subject to deal, or I could. Right. And once you create some cash, you can do a lot of different things. You can you could lend it out to somebody else from your HSA. You could invest in a note. You could do a subject to deal, a fix and flip, a wholesale assignment, whatever you want. Right. Um, but that's one one example of a real life case study of how I'm paying for my deductible. Yeah, and then let's let's talk about what else you could pay for your deductible. You could just pay your premiums, right? I'm not certain on the premiums. Okay. Um, but you know you should talk to your CPA because okay. you might be able to run those through your LLC anyways and get them. Deductible. Sure, sure. Yeah, and I, I guess I put I'll put an asterisk on this entire show that yeah, Jim has a lot of experience tax. with this, but <laughs> don't don't trust anything we say here today to be like yeah. the, the the legal definition of anything. So yeah, but, yeah. Uh, Consult yeah. your tax uh, CPA and sure. tax attorney and lawyers, of course. <laughs> right, but I think, and I could be wrong. I think you could start to pay for things like long term care insurance, like other, other things. I think. I mean, do you know? Well, for, for me, for me, I'm only using it to pay my deductible. Now, okay. um, you, if you don't have any medical expenses for the year, that's great. So it'll it'll continue to compound. Compound interest is one of the greatest wonders of the world, right? Right. right. <laughs> using the rule of seventy-two, if you're if you're making twelve percent interest, you double every six years is a great thing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, um, so you can do a lot of different things once you start to accumulate cash, or you can pay for your medical expenses. And that's a big fear, like for families. And uh, I've been coaching some guys up in your area, Mike, in Dallas, that he just left his job as a math teacher a few months ago at the end of last year. Yeah. And he's I thought got you a, weren't going to put any competition in Dallas for me. Oh, did we have that agreement? This guy's freaking crushing it too. His <laughs> name's Max. He has five girls. Oh wow! Imagine that, five girls. So you know, he's that he's got some concern there on how he's going to pay for his his medical, and this is one way that he could do it if he chose to. Open up an HSA um, with a self-directed IRA account. Find somebody who's got an IRA willing to lend your HSA some money and buy a rental. And just hopefully you don't need the money. But, you know, every once in a while, life happens and you and you have a medical expense. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, and the, you know, uh, you know, knock on wood. Like like I said, we we have very few expenses, mm -hmm. medical expenses. We just fort fortunate. I'm going to keep knocking on wood for that. But last year, I uh, was actually got a group of guys together. We played paintball, and I like twisted uh -huh. my knee, Ooh. and it was just like killing me forever. I, I've I've never actually even broken a bone, so I was so I was like a weenie about it, you know. But anyway, eventually, I was like, I, I got a, something's wrong here. So I went and got right. an MRI, and it just turned out that not, I didn't have to have surgery or anything. But an MRI was like 
thirty five hundred bucks or something. Yes. <laughs> when you're yes. paying out of pocket, literally. I remember they're like, it was like I was at the <laughs> store. I mean, and if, when I worked for corporate America, it's like yeah. it just get kind of gets taken care of, and I never yeah. even got a bill. But when you're self employed like this, it's like, well, which credit card are you going to pay this on today? Or you, you know, it gets real. It's like, yeah. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, and all of a sudden it gets real. See, you don't have medical expenses. You're still a young man, but. You know, that can change as you start to age a little, too. I mean, I, I didn't used to have any. And then the beginning, of, the end of last year, I found out I'm going to have to have a hip replacement, yeah. which um, which is a terrible thing to go through, by the way, a replacement. And uh, the rehab and everything's horrible. But a fear people have is that's like a $100,000 procedure. Yeah. hundred grand. Right. Now, my, you know, my deductible was $6,200. Right. And my rental property paid paid for my entire hip replacement from my perspective. Yeah. Totally tax free on all that profit, by the way. Yeah, and, that's awesome. You know, your contributions are tax deductible and your in your distribution to an expense is, is not taxable either. So it's a nice tax savings. Yeah. And all of us real estate investors need to take advantage of taxes because if you're creating great active income flipping houses and you're paying self-employment tax, and we're all paying property tax. We're taxed to death in this country. So yeah, anytime you have the opportunity to take advantage of it, you need to. Yeah, absolutely. And and hopefully, what folks that are listening to this, what we're what we're trying to teach you here is that you can use this as a tool. But more, most importantly, if you use this as a tool, and that alleviates you being chained to a job that you're not happy in, or you don't want to be you don't want to be associated with, just because you're afraid of leaving because of the health benefits they have there. Um, or you have when, five, or you have five, five daughters, or whatever right. the situation yeah, might like be. Max. But you know, when like, you leave yeah. your job, the whole world opens up. You're absolutely. I mean, it did for me because I was when I left my job. Before I left my job, even though I had like an executive level job, I was doing real estate part time. And as I started wholesaling, I was doing my deals from work. I don't think anybody else would ever do that. No, I'm sure they do. <laughs> it's a good way to do it, actually. So I would recommend it. You know, yeah. if you're thinking about going full time, see if you can replace your your job income by working part time um, on the side or a little bit while you're at work if you need yeah. to cheat a little like I did. Yep. Um, yep. And then when you get out, like the whole world just opens up and it's like, oh, my gosh, there is so much opportunity that I was missing. Because now I can focus, man. I can find motivated sellers. I can write contracts. I can get assignment fees and, and really start to connect dots to on a, on a phenomenal journey and an amazing life, as, as you found out as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, um, so, Jim, I've got a question. I want to actually next, before we get, after we get over this okay. question, I want to talk a little bit about uh, doing the same type of thing in um, uh, Coverdale accounts. Okay. okay. And we don't have to get into as much detail, but you can do all the same things, many of the same things we just talked about to pay for education for your kids, right? So, but before we, before we get there, I want to ask you a kind of a question of the week. So we go out and ask folks for a question uh, <laughs> that we should ask you. And the question we have for you, Jim, is what's the biggest mistake you've made and what have you learned from it? Oh boy, I've made a lot of mistakes. You know why? Because I've bought hundreds of houses. Yeah. <laughs> and any real estate guru who's out there who says they've never screwed something up is just not telling you the truth. So I bought plenty of houses I shouldn't have bought, but I don't really want to talk about those mistakes because real estate transactions are forgiving. <clears throat> what isn't forgiving is what happened to me. And that's, uh, like I said, um, growing up, my dad was an architect. He was a part-time landlord. And I watched him buy these duplexes and triplexes around our hometown of Jamestown, New York. And he did really well with them. And I, I saw what he did and how he um, was able to pay off our house that we lived in when he sold the rentals and stuff and made it look so easy. My wife, Cheryl, and I got married really young. She was 19, I was 21. And we were watching my dad and we're like, oh, we can do this. We can be landlords. Yeah. So I think um, I think we're about 23, 24, really young. And there's, there's a lot of great young people jumping into real estate. So... Um, I'm sure you won't make the same mistake I made, which is not having a clue what you're doing. <laughs> you know, think back. Now, this is back in the well, early now 90s. Well, now people have been educated by HGTV. Exactly. Is that right? Isn't that, so, isn't that so how it easy. works? <laughs> <laughs> Chip and Joanna make it look easy, too. Yeah. But, uh, you know, this is back in the early 90s. This is before we had Internet. And uh, so, you know, I couldn't get online and, and learn about investing. All I could really do is sort of watch my dad and 
I didn't want to have to ask him how to do it. So I, I said, you know, I'm a young man. I'll figure this out and do it on my own. So I found a great duplex. It was 20000 bucks in Jamestown, New York. It sounds so good on paper. I got two incomes, one up, one down. It's a three-bedroom down, one or two-bedroom up. And and uh, and we jumped in. And we didn't have a clue that the house was twenty grand because it was a train wreck, right? Yeah. Um, you know, it we were in the snow belt. It didn't have like storm windows, thermal windows, it had a space heater upstairs that kept conking out. It had a boiler in the basement that, that didn't work half the time. And yeah. we didn't have money to do any of the fix up because I had the wrong fin the wrong financing, right? And uh -huh. so like that boiler would fix and and I didn't have money to call a boiler man. <laughs> yeah. So what I do, I went down to Walden Bookstore at the mall. I bought this book on home repair. I looked up the chapter on boilers and I went in and I just kept trying to, you know, I was an engineer anyway, so you just figure it out and you fix the darn boiler. But then more stuff would uh, break and you wouldn't be able to do it. And then I had property management issues. I worked full time as an engineer and my management philosophy was um, I'll meet you after work. If you like the place, you have a deposit and you have a pulse, you're in. I don't need it. <laughs> I don't need no application, no screening. Right. And then when they wouldn't pay me, I kicked them out, and that that went really bad. I had people threaten me and all kinds of stuff because I didn't I didn't know how to evict, and I got them out the wrong way. Yeah. And so every mistake in the world. And then we said, "That's it. We want to get out of this town and move south." And uh, so we did that in 1998. So um, I lost close to 10 years of investing because when we moved and we sold that on a land contract, and I didn't lose a penny on the duplex. Um, which is great. But my wife, Cheryl, said, that's it, Jim. We are never going to be landlords again, and you will never be buying a piece of investment property again. <laughs> it took me 10 years to get her back into buying. Yeah. So that 10 years, I'm certain that I've lost well over a million dollars. Oh, yeah, I bet. I bet. It's so funny because we, whenever you, you probably, you had a bad experience. And I yeah. think people, you know, one of the things you, I'm sure that we both coach and mentor people. So yeah. I'm sure that, uh, you know, you have the same philosophy as me is like, Hey, you're going to fail. That, that's okay. But sure. you just have to like learn from it and move forward. And, you know, as you know, most people, most people do what you did and they just give up. Well, this doesn't yeah. work. And they just kind of close that door. But, uh, you know, it sucks when you have that experience on your very first deal, but, um, that doesn't mean you should stop necessarily. Right. Right. You're right about that. Well, you know what? It's okay. You should learn. You should just plan to fail. It's okay to fail. Yeah. But the key is how quickly you recover, how fast you get back up on your feet, and how quickly you move to that next deal. That's the important part of failing. That's where I screwed up. I didn't have a network. I didn't have anybody training me. I didn't have a clue. I didn't know what I didn't know. My ego was in the way. I just said, my dad makes it look so easy. It's got to be easy. Right. Well, it also sounds like you try to do everything yourself, too, which I, I certainly advise people like. <laughs> don't manage your, you know, don't man. I don't manage my own rental properties. I don't know who would, I, you know, I will, never will. Uh, and so, um, certainly if you, if you want to manage your own rentals properties, like get some scale first, like don't manage one, right? <laughs> it's right. just not worth it. But people tend to want to save money or do the fix up themselves and stuff. And it's like, well, the real value of your time is finding another deal, right? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I used to mow my own grass. Um, we still do manage our own property. We've gotten yeah. good at it, but we have systems and things. Sure, and sure. My wife, Cheryl, does it. She's phenomenal at it. And we don't, we, I don't, I don't mean to jinx myself, but we don't have any tenant problems. Yeah. Things are good. Yeah. And it's not for everybody. I mean, my, my point is, is that, uh, especially if you're trying to get started and you're an aspiring real estate investor, that can hold you back. Just like if you go, you know, mow the lawns yourself and do the maintenance oh, yourself. Yeah, and it's hard to scale that, right? Yeah. I mean, I used yeah. to mow the grass. Cheryl would do the cleaning. But no, we we finally realized that was a bad idea. Yeah. Because, you know, I got around the right group of people that taught me other ways to do it. So yeah, it was absolutely. good. Absolutely. Well, let's let's talk a little bit more about the, um, the networking part. You kind of talked about your network. And yeah. that's something that, that I advocate a lot. I talk a lot about just yeah, building your too. network. Um, and even stuff like investing in your HSA that we just talked about, like you didn't probably know about those things until you got around some of the people that were using them or started to talk about them, right? Yeah. I mean, that's really the mistake I made. The mistake wasn't buying the duplex and stuff. I mean, I had the wrong financing, wrong house, whatever. But the mistake was I didn't know what I didn't know and I didn't invest in myself. There was no online training. 
And um, everything, when I came back in and Cheryl, my wife, agreed, okay, we can go out and do this, I said, I, I want to do it different. I want to invest in myself. So join a mastermind, right? That's an easy way to do it. That's where I met our mutual friend, David Phelps. Yeah. And so I started to get around people like Dr. David Phelps, who's been a dear friend now for 10 years. Um, and when I got in the right room with the right people who were willing to help me, and when I got stuck... I could reach out my hand and they would pull me out of the mud if I got stuck in the mud yeah. and then learn about systems and processes and deals and how to buy money with with other buy real estate with other people's money and tax advantage accounts and all that other stuff. Everything changed. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, it's interesting. What 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 kind of advice would you give to people? It sounds like because I, I know I know how you feel. You're like you, when you look back at that rental. You said your ego got in the way, and you're talking about how your dad made it easy. Like you were probably uh, embarrassed or didn't feel like you needed to ask for help, right? Like I can I'm figure sure. this out. I'm a smart guy, right? I mean that that's yeah. kind of what it was. That's but a lot of investors are that way, right? Like mm -hmm. I can figure it out. I don't need this. I don't need a coach. I don't need a mentor. I don't need any help. I can just go do it, right? So, what advice would you give that person if they're listening right now that that may, may be yeah. making that mistake <laughs> or about to? You know, there's a lot of great information on YouTube. But don't build your whole business based off the uh, the YouTube education. Yeah, <laughs> and be careful who you go with. I mean, if there's there's a lot of great opportunities out there. You and I talked about Collective Genius and others earlier. Yeah. Um, and then on the other hand, there's a lot of really poor ones that I know people that have dropped thirty five, forty thousand dollars into and walked away with nothing. Wow. So yeah. you do have to do your due diligence. But the importance of getting in the right room with the right people. I can't under us. I can't overemphasize the importance of building your network and you got to you got to have a network of people that can reach out and help you when you get stuck you also need networks of people helping you find deals you need networks of people for private lending you need a network of bird dogs a network of wholesalers contractors everything comes back to network that's why yeah. we like to say your network equals your net worth yep i yep. didn't know that in my early 20s i wish somebody had told me yeah <laughs> yeah, and I I want to talk about uh, a whole lot about my background, but people that have listened to the show religiously know that that I've always been a huge advocate of networking, and it evolved to a point to where I started a podcast, you know, yeah. three three year almost three almost three years ago, and here we are, episode number three hundred and twenty six, <laughs> and and what that's meant for me is, uh, you know, even though I was at the top of my game in terms of investing, or at the time uh, was, and just continue to advance. But it allowed me to start to meet other people like you and build relationships with people and join some groups and kind of take things to a whole nother level. So not that – again, not that everybody has to go start a podcast and do that. But you can do those things in your market for sure. You know, I started a podcast maybe six months ago. It's called the Investor Success Podcast, Mike. Yep. And I didn't know if I was going to like it or not. And, and it turns out now that I'm six or eight months in, I really do like it. I like being able to talk to people – that are thought leaders in our industry about what they think about real estate investing. Yeah. Well, it opens your eyes. I mean, I've, I bought hundreds of houses and I did it a very specific way. Mm -hmm. And then I start to meet people that, for example, uh, buy in multiple markets and they have a virtual model or right. they only do commercial properties or you start to learn these other things and you're like, wow, that's really, that's really interesting. It, it really kind of opens up your world because people think like real estate is real estate. Like, I don't know anything about commercial. I don't know anything oh. about investing in apartments. I have friends that do it. I have friends that are the best best in the business at it. But if you threw me into it, I could figure it out eventually. But the first thing I would do is call the people in my network right. that I know that know what to do, right? Right. Yeah. Hey, I was out looking at commercial property a couple of days ago. And this is just sort of a funny side story. But we walk into this building and you ever hear of like the escape room businesses? Ah. <laughs> it's like where you have people go in and they get locked like in a room and they got yeah. people their way out. So I mean, this I've building, seen a couple of movies where they Yeah, okay. Them, yeah. So this this entire commercial building, it was like three thousand square feet, is is like the escape room business. So I like walk in with the broker and there's a sign that says like something about zombie apocalypse. I'm, and then there's like blood prints on the wall. I'm like, what the heck is this place? He's like, Oh, this is the escape room. Yeah. So I'd never experienced something quite like that. Wow, that's interesting. <laughs> uh, well, uh, Jim, we have just a, a few more minutes here. I wanted to kind of circle back around and talk a little bit yeah. about uh, Coverdell accounts. And I know yeah. that uh, I, I don't think you necessarily use them because your kids yeah. are, are older and education's out of the way. But there's a lot of the same things you can do with a, with an education account that you can with a health savings account, right? 
Yeah, absolutely. Coverdell is a phenomenal tool. You can use it for, for private school. You can use it for some of your school expenses. You can use it for college. Mm. And uh, burdening these kids coming out of college with phenomenal amounts of loan debt is scary to me. Yeah. So why not do what we do best as real estate investors, invest for it, build that account balance up, and let that pay for their college. All these deals we're talking about, everything from a subject to deal to buying rentals can be done inside of your self-directed educational account. It's a great way to go. Also in a self-directed IRA for your retirement. And for me now, because I've got two grandkids who uh, one of them turned one today, he's downstairs. Okay. But uh, I've got them set up to inherit a Roth IRA. Okay, and we're starting to invest into that account right now while my father-in-law is still alive. And um, that can also do these same deals. And that's how we're going to pay for my grandkids' college education wow. is through the inherited Roth IRA someday. Yeah. That's so amazing. there's all these different tools. And it's like, uh, think of it as having like a giant toolbox and all this stuff at your disposal. And you just pick this tool, this tool, depending on what you're doing and who the motivated seller is and what the deal is, and what the deal flow is. Just pick out all these tools and you get to engineer your own deals that way. Yeah. It, you know, it's, it's funny because for a long time I've thought about stuff in terms of number of deals. Like, uh, you know, for example, I want a new car. Well, I need to go do a deal. Uh, right. And it's like you, you can start to – typically we kind of – I don't want to use a ne too negative a word, but you kind of launder it. Like I do a deal and then I get the money and then I go <laughs> use that money to buy what I want. But it's like, well, just use the deal and put it in there and pay for education, pay for, you know, college, pay for health insurance, pay for a lot of things, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, yeah. you know, people are crushing it, flipping houses and stuff this year. I mean, yeah. so you got to think about how you want to engineer and craft your life and take the path that's best for you and your family because, Nobody should be hesitating right now, Mike. I mean, this is a lot better uh, real estate market than the last several years where it was on the downturn. Yeah, yeah. It's a great time to invest. Yeah. Well, Jim, uh, for folks who want to learn more about you, to where do they go to learn more about you? And then tell us how to find your podcast. Okay. Well, I've got, I've got a special gift for your listeners today, Mike. All right. And they can go to uh, bigmoneyinvestor.com forward slash flip nerd. And they can download a contractor documentation kit so you don't get yourself in trouble when you're flipping houses. So it's got a contractor agreement, an indemnity. Um, it talks about how to understand the different classes, A, B, and C of contractors. And that whole kit is there at bigmoneyinvestor.com slash flipnerd. Awesome. Okay. And then as far as my podcast, um, check out Investor Success Podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, iHeart, wherever. Just awesome. Google it. Awesome. Investor Success Podcast. Okay, we'll get a link uh, down below too. So, Jim, cool. thanks for joining us today. Thanks for sharing right. some information. And I think this is timely for a lot of people. There's a lot of discussion through this political, this election oh, yeah. cycle, right, about healthcare and what a mess it's turned into. And so, there, a lot of folks don't know that there is a there's there might be a better way, huh? Yeah, I've enjoyed it. I mean, I'm motivated. I'm ready to go. I'm going to meet a motivated seller in just a few minutes. <laughs> well, good luck to you. <laughs> thanks. Thanks, Jim. Great to see you. And for everybody Thank listening you. in, uh, thanks for joining us for another episode. We look forward to seeing you on the next one. Have a great day. Thanks for joining us for this episode of the FlipNerd.com Investing Show. If you're not yet an elite member of FlipNerd, you're missing out. We have tons of great training, including a new detailed master class published each month and live training webinars with experts twice a month. Plus, you'll get access to all of our archives where we already have a growing library of master classes and other training videos. Elite members also get membership in our incredible online mastermind group where many of the top real estate investors from across the country, including many of the hundreds of guests I've had on the show in the past, are already members. Whether you're brand new, looking to get started, or a veteran, you simply must join today. I promise you won't be disappointed. To learn more or join today, please visit flipnerd.com slash lab. That's flipnerd.com slash lab. See you on the next show.